the choir had a close contact with a positive case, so uh, there's no choir today, they're all isolating, uh, so we're on our own. So we'll begin the uh, Mass with hymn number 708, 708 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter own. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Hark the loud celestial hymn, angel choirs above are raising, cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus praising, fill the hands with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. You're very welcome to our celebration of Mass today. It's the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Welcome to if you join us online. It's lovely to have you and uh, to have increasing numbers every week as people gain confidence and begin to be able to participate more and more in what used to be normal for us and I hope will become the new normal. The uh, the teaching and activity of Jesus in Mark's Gospel that we're following in these days continues. And Jesus encounters a person who cannot be a disciple, for they can neither hear him speak nor speak of what they have seen and heard. So he empowers them to discipleship by giving them those abilities. We can hear and we can speak that we might be empowered as disciples too by the Lord's presence, we pray, and that we might celebrate worthily. We call to mind our sins and we ask God's pardon. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated, may the sins of the world receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom, and an everlasting inheritance. 
we make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Say to all faint hearts, courage, do not be afraid. Look, your God is coming, vengeance is coming. The retribution of God, he is coming to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unsealed. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, with the tongues of the dumb sing for joy. For water gushes in the desert, streams in the wasteland. The scorched earth becomes a lake, the parched land springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, my soul give praise to the Lord. My soul give praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. My soul give praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. My soul give praise to the Lord. The Lord upholds the widow and orphan, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God from age to age. My soul give praise to the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers, do not try to combine faith in Jesus Christ, our glorified Lord, with the making of distinctions between classes of people. Now suppose a man comes into your synagogue, beautifully dressed and with a gold ring on, and at the same time a poor man comes in in shabby clothes, and you take notice of the well-dressed man and say, Come this way to the best seats. Then you tell the poor man, Stand over there, or you can sit on the floor by my footrest. Can't you see that you have used two different standards in your mind and turned yourself into judges and corrupt judges at that? Listen, my dear brothers, it is those who are poor according to the world that God chose to be rich in faith and to be the heirs to the kingdom which he promised to those who love him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Returning from the district of Tyre, Jesus went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee through the Decapolis region. And they brought him a deaf man who had an impairment in his speech. And they asked him to lay his hands on them. He took the man aside and private away from the crowd, put his fingers into the man's ears, touched his tongue with spittle. And then he looked up to heaven and he sighed and he said, Ephatha, that is, be open. And his ears were opened and the ligament of his tongue was loosened and he spoke clearly. And Jesus ordered them to tell no one about it. But the more he insisted, the more widely they, ins they published it. Their admiration was unbounded. He has done all things well, they said. He makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
First of all, the good news, no parking fines for Brain of Britain this week. Two other experiences, though, struck me, and uh, I'll try and put them both together, (laughs) and put both together with the gospel. This will be good. The first was, I caught some of the Paralympics, a particular story actually covered uh, on various media, suggested to you a couple of weeks ago that uh, the example of the Olympics of people grafting and practicing and training so hard was was very inspiring. And while we won't necessarily join the communion of saints immediately, we won't necessarily be the gold medal winners uh, in discipleship to make the effort, to expend the energy, uh, to do our best is, is, is to show, as it were, the Olympic spirit uh, in, in our lives as disciples and how uh, seemingly very ordinary people can achieve extraordinary things. So the same for ourselves by virtue of the power of God inspiring, guiding and encouraging our efforts. The Paralympic spirit, though, seems to be slightly different. Um, the story I saw, perhaps you saw it too, was a cyclist on his way down the hill in the final straight of a race and he had about a kilometre to go and he was passing someone coming up the hill who was half a lap, half a lap behind them. So they had about two and a half kilometres to go and they were labouring in, in, against the gradient in the wind and in the rain. And rather than flash past them towards the line, because he said, well, he wasn't going to win a medal anyway, but apart from that, he slowed down to offer a word of encouragement to the other cyclist who was behind him toiling. And I thought that was very powerful because for the Olympics, of course, everybody's aware of their strength, uh, everybody's aware of the need to get there first, and so it's kind of every, every man for himself, whereas with the Paralympics, it seems that uh, when we are open about the things we can't do very well, um, or they are obvious because it's a, it's a physical manifestation of a weakness, um, that engenders a certain solidarity, um, a certain desire on the part of others to assist. And I thought it a very powerful illustration of the Paralympic spirit uh, that suggests that we all have weaknesses hidden or otherwise, and that we can all be of some support and encouragement to one another. And in fact, the support and encouragement might not just be helpful, it might be vital and might be necessary. The second experience was that we got together as the priests of the diocese with our bishop on Tuesday afternoon. We try to do that every three months or so. We had been going to a conference centre gathering in the afternoon for seminar, discussion, uh, activity, uh, then prayer in the evening, uh, dinner, uh, conceivably a glass of wine, and uh, for those who could, an overnight. Um, And uh, unfortunately, as with most things that involve gathering together, that's been impossible. So this meeting was scheduled for May uh, 2020, and, and it took place on Tuesday. And it was absolutely wonderful, as nearly all of the priests were there, Uh, together with the bishop, and what we agreed was no particular agenda other than that we would gather, that we would take a walk, if weather permitted, and indeed it did, either on the flat for the less able or up the old Kilpatrick Hills for the more able. Um, We would pray in the evening, uh, and we would would have dinner and just some social time. Um, And and so it was, Uh, and of course what happened was we began to share our experiences of what it had been like to live through the pandemic as individuals uh, and as communities. Uh, And you can imagine what we talked about because it was the same, I'm sure, for your workplaces and your families. Um, The the challenges of of keeping safe um, and of keeping others safe. For us, the challenge of of managing a public place in safety, ensuring the protocols were in place amid the, the bewildering variety of laws and recommendations and customs and restrictions and protocols that were fired at us by various people week to week. The challenge of of ministry to the sick and the vulnerable 
uh, how, how best to care for them without putting them in danger. Um, the challenge of ministering to people who were bereaved when not the normal funeral rites couldn't be observed, the normal rituals surrounding the giving back to God and the letting go of people were, were impossible or, or severely restricted, and how that burdened people, um, and how sometimes uh, you got their burdens in a very particular way. Um, the challenges of, of, of managing a public space, the challenges of being alone, uh, the challenges of being apart from company and ministry and activity in our parish um, when we are normally very up front and out there, people mixing all the time um, and being present to people in all kinds of circumstance. How some of us, like me, were able to transfer our ministry really from the parish where we weren't able to gather to school, which they were able to gather um, in, in, in number at least, uh, and which was a community full of very vulnerable young people often, and, and teachers on the front line, um, and how that brought with it both challenge and reward. Um, the impossibility of getting any time off, uh, how, how we felt at the end of it, uh, a bit burnt out, uh, and, and keen to recharge the batteries to, to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves down, and how we're going through a kind of process of decompression now to, to bring things back to normal uh, each week, trying to do a little more of, of what, what we've been doing as we have in the parish. How different parishes are at different stages in that process. Some still uh, very restricted because of space, perhaps, because of the reluctance of people, because of the demographic to be present, um, and, and other places uh, moving ahead um, and opening up almost completely. So it, it was it was a, a powerful uh, time uh, to ex to exchange our experiences and and our solidarity, because sometimes you feel very vulnerable and very alone. And you're not sure if you're getting it right or not, and that someone else is getting it wrong in the same way is a, is, is a consolation at least. The other thing all of us spoke about was how it would have been impossible without the support and the encouragement of our parish communities, how you saw us through by your word of encouragement, by your presence, by your generosity, by dropping off food and uh, bottle of wine, whatever it was, by your word when we were able to, to meet in the car park at socially distanced, um, and that kind of encouragement and affirmation um, spoke very powerfully to us. Um, it may be that you think I'm Olympian, but let me reassure you, I'm much more Paralympian in my ministry, much more aware of shortcomings and disabilities, and much more aware of the need I have for your word of encouragement. I note with interest that the man who required help to be a disciple from Jesus was brought to Jesus by those who were his friends. I think perhaps Paralympian would be a good description of our lives of discipleship, very much dependent upon the word of encouragement and the support of each other into the presence of God that we be further empowered. So I'm very grateful to you for all you've done, for all you've been, and I ask that together let's seek to, to build as best we can our lives of discipleship and you. To make known our needs and prayers in the presence of God, we stand.
Bless the Church in her universal mission and make her open to receive all who come. Give, her, give to her ministers the spirit of compassion and wisdom to discern the needs of those who turn to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on all in the world who seek for help and are uncertain of their direction. Open the ears that have not heard the words of salvation and loose the tongues that have not learned to praise. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless our families with health and strength and with grace to acknowledge the great mercies that we have been given. Help us to know and to relieve the troubles of those we meet in our daily lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have compassion on all sick children and on the parents who grieve for them. Come in mercy for the healing of any who are afflicted in hearing or speech. Give skill and wisdom to those who work for their relief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the departed who worship not through the ears and tongues of flesh, but in the fellowship of the Spirit. May they rest and rejoice in eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who join us online, particularly if they are carers, caring at home, or carers by profession, or if they are shielding, or unwell. And let's pray as we remember the sick also for Elizabeth Kelly and Sheila Kern, whose illness came to light only after we had printed the bulletin. And pray for our children and young people at school, going to university and college, who find themselves in an age group which is vulnerable at the moment. The Lord will be with them, give them courage, strength. And we pray finally for our dead. We remember those who've died recently and those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those who've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, you call us as individuals and yet together to discipleship. Give us courage and strength as individuals and together. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our gifts of prayer. Graciously grant that through our offering we may do fitting homage to you, and by partaking of these sacred mysteries we may be faithfully united in mind and in heart. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Lord God of heaven and earth, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For by your word you created our world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us that same word made flesh as our mediator. He has spoken your words to us, called us to follow him. He's the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of his spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory and in joyful celebration together with them we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and to always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed also your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your own right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on this oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking in this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit, grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bonds of communion, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the other bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire holy people. Grant that the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and their pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the paths of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, 
the apostles and the martyrs, St. Conval and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Socially distanced, we offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful people, Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and this heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. All the relevant notices are available on the webpage on Facebook and in our bulletin, which you can take as you leave. Uh, published all the, the donations for the month of August, so thank you for your ongoing generosity to support the parish, as well as the toiletries, food and donations for uh, our outreach to those in particular need. So thank you for, for that. Uh, thanks for being here uh, today. Thank you if you joined us online. hope you have a nice day and a good week too. And I hope that you feel uh, quite safe and secure in the environment that we seek to create and will continue to do so. So please do continue to, to be with us and do encourage others to join us. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I kneel before you, as I bow my head in prayer, take this day, make it yours, and fill me with your love. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu. All I have I give you, every deed and worship are yours, Mother of Christ, Mother of mine, present them to my Lord. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu. As I kneel before you, and I see your smiling face, Every thought, every word is lost in your embrace. Ave Dominus, Dominus,